Looks like ransomware comes in a new flavor, Java. Andy, sounds like you've got a story for us related to some Java malware, ransomware in particular, that's using some interesting tricks. What can you tell us? Uh, yeah, you're right. Um, We've got some new ransomware out there um, that's got a little interesting twist, like like you talked about. Um, just just as like a, a quick overview, um, what had happened was a consulting company called KPMG was called in to do incident response for an unnamed uh, educational institution in Europe somewhere. And uh, what they found was that an attacker had actually gone into their network via an internet-facing RDP server. Uh, once they got in there, they then installed a backdoor. Uh, and they were able to get persistence with that backdoor using uh, something called something called image file execution options injection. So uh, image file execution options uh, allows developers to attach debuggers to different processes, you know, for the you know for purposes of testing and whatnot. So uh, this particular attacker actually attached the backdoor to the Windows on-screen keyboard process. So when you open that guy, the backdoor opens. So uh, KPMG was the one who did the actual incident response. The malware itself was actually handed off to BlackBerry, who then actually did the analysis. Uh, and they reported that what they observed was that the attacker actually installed the backdoor um, via that via RDP, and then just sat and wait, waited for seven days, and did nothing. Uh, and then after those seven days, the attacker then logged in to the, the infected machine, uh, went to other machines uh, that they could, and then deployed the payload, the malware. As you said, the interesting aspect of this story is that the ransomware was actually written in Java, which is a little unusual. You don't typically see Java being used for ransomware, but in this case it was. Um, but the, the real interesting twist here is that the payload was actually compiled in a JImage uh, source file type, which was, it's, it's Java image. So if you're familiar with Java, uh, you're familiar with jar files or Java archive files, pretty common. Uh, JImage is similar, but it's actually not, it's not the same, but uh, it's very, it's very much less common uh, and it's very uncommon when it comes to developers. Um, so it's, it's kind of the first of its kind as far as that using that particular image format for uh, ransomware. Um, and then for, you know, for those who don't know, what, you know, when you compile code, essentially what that does is it takes all of the libraries and modules that are required to run that application and it just sort of packages it into, into its own little thing so that you can just drop that onto whatever server or, or computer you need um, that may or may not have those, those uh, packages installed. So it's interesting because, uh, you know, we, like I said, we don't usually see Java being used for this. And then, you know, we've got this new kind of obscure format and um, BlackBerry actually reports that they're seeing an uptick in, in ransomware being written in Java and in and Google's relatively new uh, programming language called Go, which is interesting. So, we might be on. We might be at the beginning of a new, interesting chapter in malware, uh, and I, and I thought that's why this this story warranted some discussion. What I'm reading here is that the this particular campaign of ransomware targets educational institutions and software houses, which are, I mean, I've I've heard of it that's affecting educational institutions not a lot, but software houses those are both kind of interesting targets. There's not a, a ton of detail um, on the, with that particular aspect of it. The write up. That BlackBerry has on their side is actually specifically for uh, the Windows variant for that that targeted an educational institution because um, it does actually also target Linux as well. Um, but you're right in that it's a little it's vague, but it's also interesting. I thought that was interesting. Yeah, if it's a Java, you know, application that's all self-contained, then it ought to pretty much you know, modulo certain OS underlying things that it might call, but if it ought to run just fine on anything else that runs Java. So it ought to run just fine on Linux, probably runs on Macs, you know, might even run on some IoT devices. Yeah, it's... On, on old, old um, soft software, um, not smartphones, but feature phones. Oh, that was dear. a big deal. It's like Java runs on your feature phone. Well, I guess now malware does too. <laughs> Maybe we haven't proven that, but you know. Yeah, yeah. I, that I'm a little less certain that it, the Java environment would be full featured enough to 
but yeah, that's that's actually kind of scary that they're they might be more architecture independent with this type of ransomware. And then just to share a couple more details about the malware, uh, it, it's pretty targeted. So the so BlackBerry has, has found that this this ransomware has actually been active since I think it's December of 2019. So it's been in the wild now for about six months. And this is the first we're hearing of it. And it's also not now that now that it's been discovered, it's also not discovered, you know, in a plethora of other places. So it's pretty targeted in that the malware authors seem to be, you know, holding it a little close to the vest. They're only using it for very specific targets. Um, you take that into account with the fact that um, it's it's done mostly, it's not automated, it's it's done mostly manually. So the attacker actually finds a vulnerable RDP server um, or an exposed one, you know, gets into the network. Uh, the, the article talks about the write up talks about how you know they managed to get local administrator on that box to install the backdoor to disable uh, antivirus, uh, and then they come back a week later and manually uh, start the back uh, start the payload or unleash the payload. So it's pretty targeted, which is a another wrinkle, another interesting wrinkle to this whole thing. Yeah, well, and another reason not to have RDP open to the internet. Very true. Yes. Yes. How many times do we have to say that? I, I have a feeling that, that this won't be the last time, Jim. Probably not. So I'll mention I'll mention it's called it's called the Tycoon. It's called Tycoon Ransomware. Um, I think BlackBerry named it that because when you opened up the actual pack, the Java the J image uh, package or whatever you call it, um, there were a few files in there that that had Tycoon in the file name or the directory name or something. But I thought it was interesting that the, there, are, there, are, there are a couple variants of this particular ransomware. And then the early variants, um, the file extensions were dot .regrum from, oh, from The Shining, mm -hmm. uh, which I thought, I was thinking, well, why not just call it the Redrum ransomware? You know, that <laughs> would be so much more dastardly. But in any, in any case, um, another aspect of the earlier variants, actually, is that the attackers were using the same uh, encryption key for mm -hmm. everything. So. What that means is if you decrypt one, you can decrypt all that have that same variant. Uh, newer versions of the Tycoon ransomware actually have, have adjusted and adapted to, you know, to avoid that. So now that you, know, you can't really do that anymore. Um, and then the newer versions of, this, of the ransomware, actually they, the file extensions are, I think it was Thanos was one of them and Grinch, dot, dot Thanos and dot Grinch. So that was a little funny. Um, and then another interesting little twist of this guy is typically with ransomware, you know, you, you, you get hit, unfortunately, and then you get a little message on your screen that kind of says, you know, here, here's what's going on. This is my Bitcoin, you know, wallet address, you know, pay me my money. Um, it's usually what you get. What you don't usually get is instructions on how to buy Bitcoin. Usually it's just sort of, you know, figure it out and do it or else. Uh, and I thought it was a little interesting. BlackBerry provides a nice screenshot of the of the message you get, and it actually provides you a little bit more guidance on how to do so. And I thought that was a nice touch. Well, I mean, if you are in this criminal business, if people can't pay you because they don't understand how to get Bitcoin, then I guess you don't get paid. Uh, you know, I've actually have heard of of um, at least one other ransomware that did that, and I think. Uh, whatever market they were directing people to actually put up a message like if you're here because of ransomware you're going to want to read this information we have about ransomware and why we're not the people who are scamming you right now little disclaimer little disclaimer because i imagine if you're not very technically savvy everybody who's you know if they send you to this website you assume that this is the criminal's website